Hello, welcome to European Open Briefing for Tuesday, May the 8th. I'm Rafi Boyajan, currency analyst at XM.com, and we're going to be having a look at what's happening in the currency markets today. The US dollar is holding uh, near uh, those fresh four-month four highs uh, it achieved yesterday. Um, we do have a bit of uncertainty, though, as President Trump has said he will uh, make the announcement on whether or not uh, the US will remain in the Iran nuclear deal later today. The euro continues to slide downwards. Uh, we had more disappointing euros on data yesterday. The Australian dollar is also weaker this morning after Australian retail sales missed expectations, though there was some support for the Aussie from um, positive Chinese trade data. Uh, and oil has come to profit taking ahead of uh, that decision by President Trump. Uh, let's take a closer look at the US dollar now. We can see dollar index continuing to climb upwards. Uh, it hit 92.95 yesterday a fresh four month high dollar yen though uh, is struggling a little bit uh, it's been hovering around the 109 level for the past two to three days uh, so the c dollar continues to uh, gain support from uh, that monetary divergence between the US and other uh, economies uh, as that divergence is once again in the spotlight uh, as the the US is pretty much now the only country which is uh, producing solid data, whereas we're seeing weak numbers out of the Eurozone, the UK, uh, as well as uh, Japan uh, to an extent. Uh, so uh, the trade war risks, though, uh, are still lingering in the background, but there is uh, some optimism that uh, there will be a uh, some sort of resolution to the to that spat between the US and China. Uh, last week we had the US delegation traveling to China that didn't produce any breakthrough, uh, but those talks will continue. Uh, we're seeing reports that Chinese officials will travel to Washington next week uh, to hold uh, more uh, talks. Uh, dollar yen, uh, though. Uh, so apart from those lingering trade war risks, uh, is also uh, the the yen is benefiting from the. Um, some uh, concerns about possible impact of uh, what's happening in the markets currently in terms of higher oil prices, stronger dollar, stronger US yields. Uh, that's putting a heavy downside pressure on uh, some emerging market currencies such as the Argentine peso as well as the Turkish lira. Uh, so that's creating some risk off which is uh, supporting the yen. That's why we're seeing dollar yen uh, weaker than the dollar index. Uh, and of course, uh, the possibility that, that the US may pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. Um, that could uh, raise uh, uncertainty um, leading to some risk aversion if that decision which is expected at 18 hours GMT uh, confirms uh, expectations that Trump will indeed uh, not renew uh, the Iran nuclear deal. Uh, let's look at European currencies now. We can see the euro remaining on a on a downward path. Uh, yesterday we had disappointing German industrial, uh, industrial orders uh, for March and the eurozone sentence index for May also falling below expectations. A uh, bit of positive data this morning though. German industrial production uh, rose more than expected in March and German trade data also was fairly positive. Uh, so that's helping the euro hold above the $1.19 level yesterday. Uh, it briefly fell to as low as $1.1896 to a fresh uh, four-month low. Uh, we do have uh, some political uncertainty uh, in Italy that doesn't seem to have uh, spilled over to currency markets just yet. Uh, it is looking more and more likely that we, we could see fresh elections uh, in Italy. Uh, we had those, of course, um, inconclusive elections uh, a few months ago uh where uh, but since then the co uh, the the uh, the parties with the biggest gain with the, with the biggest um a share of the votes uh, still haven't haven't managed to form any coalition. Uh, the president uh, is appealing to the parties to form some sort of a technocrat government, uh, but all the parties are so far rejecting that uh, offers uh, that appeal. Uh, so we could potentially see uh, fresh elections, snap elections in Italy, uh, either in the summer or towards the end of the year. Uh, if we turn to the to the pound now, sterling is somewhat steadier. Uh, it's uh, in fact a little bit firmer this morning around. 
1.35 as 65 UK markets were closed yesterday so that potentially helped uh, the pound edge upwards uh, but of course we've got that big risk on Thursday where the Bank of England uh, is expected uh, to announce uh, its uh, interest rate decision uh, but will also publish its latest quarterly outlook which will give some clues as to uh, how rates uh, in what direction rates will go uh, over the coming uh, months uh, and now let's have a look at the Australian dollar we had the retail sales numbers out of Australia uh, they were flat uh, in March a bit missing forecast that they would rise by 0.3% uh, overall we saw retail sales weak in the first quarter that could weigh on GDP growth uh, we're seeing the Aussie slip below the $0.75 level uh, though both the Aussie and the key we have managed to so far hold above uh, last week's multi-month lows uh, that were uh, set on May the 1st. We can see that unlike the euro and the pound, they have actually managed to um, uh, do a little bit better. Uh, we did have some Chinese numbers as well this morning. We saw Chinese exports jumping by 12.9% year on year after a 2.7% drop in March. Uh, so those that figure was above expectations. Imports also r rose more than expected. Uh, so that suggests uh, that Chinese economy is st still in good shape and domestic demand is also holding up uh, relatively well given uh, the rising trade uh, tensions. Uh, if you look at the New Zealand dollar, it's uh, currently trading around the 0.70 dollar level. Uh, we've got the uh, interest rate decision by the Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, early on Thursday or late on Wednesday, depending on your time zone. Uh, we could potentially see a more ho a more dovish RPNZ, though they are expected to hold rates at 1.75%. And finally, looking at oil prices, we can see WTI. Um, uh, moving downwards, uh, yesterday they rose to uh, the highest since November 2014, reaching $70.84 a barrel. Brent crude also hit a fresh three and a half month high of $76.34. Uh, so we're seeing a bit of a sell off ahead of uh, that decision by President Trump later uh, today. Uh, so the, we, some markets appear to have mostly priced in uh, the fact that uh, the US will probably uh, cancel the Iran nuclear deal, uh, which would potentially lead to uh, fresh sanctions on Iranian oil exports and therefore uh, that would uh, hurt uh, oil supply uh, and put outward pressure on prices. So given how much oil prices have rallied in the past few days, uh, we could potentially see uh, prices falling after that um, after that expected uh, decision uh, on mainly as it would uh, mean uh, by the rumor sell the fact uh, though some reports are suggesting that uh, the the US will not pull out from the deal altogether uh, so uh, so we could potentially see some volatility uh, when that an, uh, announcement uh, comes looking at today's economic calendar we can see the data already released we also had Japanese uh, household spending which came in below expectations uh, the Chinese data there as well for the rest of the day uh, it's going to be fairly quiet apart from a speech by Fed Chair Jerome Powell at 7 of 15 GMT, as well as uh, President Trump's uh, announcement on the Iran deal at 18 hours GMT. That's it for me. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.